friends, my name's Victoria and you're watching Plantastics. Today we're going to be going on a house plant tour. I'm going to show you all the plants that I have in my house right now and my back porch and uh, just tell you, show you what's going on. So let's get started. We're going to start in my office. So here is my plant corner. I use this as a backdrop in a lot of my photos when I'm like holding things. So if you're curious, I'll just briefly kind of tell you in this video who's who in terms of plants. So this really large one here is the Radicans Luxurians Anthurium. We have the Queen of Air Plants here. This is the Silver Dragon Alocasia. We have a Billianti. It was once a seedling, believe it or not, and now it's got some pretty nice growth. This is a Stromanthi Trio Star, um, and it's 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 a lot easier to care for than a Calathea. There's actually Stromanthes, Tenanthes, and Calatheas, and people kind of confuse them as all being Calatheas, but they're actually all very different. So you may notice that there's some discoloration right in here, and that's what happens whenever you use water that's like not rainwater or distilled. So that's just something that happens, and I try to avoid that because I use my fish tank water, which is distilled, or I use rainwater. Here is my Melanocrysum. I know people often fret about losing leaves, but this one is literally so beautiful. It's been on the plant since I had it, so it just makes sense. If you ever are debating whether or not you should be worried, it's just good to look at how much new growth you have. Now, this plant needs 60 to 70% humidity for the leaves to unroll. I have not maintained that. But even then, I have had some that didn't have an issue, like this one, if I can get this other one out the way. See, that one's fine. And then we have some others that are kind of hidden here. So, they look okay. This pink is sunburn, and they're really prone to being sunburnt when they're forming. So, here's another one that looks fine. But yeah, that's my trick. That I've found but I just do not remember to run my humidifier I don't like to do that unless humidity is like below 35% or something so I have lots of leaves what I've done is I've chopped up the pieces and I've just propagated them down here at the bottom so that's how it kind of looks full now this is not a perfect plant it's just okay so that's this corner. Now we're gonna move to the shelving unit. So my collection suffered greatly because I was gone for five weeks and I had people that I really appreciated coming by and caring for them when I was gone. Otherwise, I wouldn't have any house plants. They kept them alive. However, I just had some things go wrong with some of the systems I had in place and one of those was my African violets and their wicking. I had them all over a very large reservoir which prevented them from drying out and like dying, but the water wasn't changed. So it became incredibly acidic and the nutrient solution that I was using needed to be, the water basically was evaporating. So it was becoming incredibly concentrated. So my African violets do not look very great right now, but they are recovering. So I had a comment on one of my previous videos about, well, how do you know that this is or isn't INSV? And I'll tell you how I know. The reason that I know it's not is because if this was INSV, it would not be growing back as soon as I changed the soil and the water. So if it was INSV, it would gradually get worse. Or that's been my experience. I did have four out of five of an order from Violet Barn test positive for INSV and I froze those bagged them and threw them away so and I had them tested with my local extension I did not test them with some home test I had plant pathologists test it for me so those results were very accurate I also had the extension center send the test results to Violet Barn it took them over a month but they did eventually refund me so I just wanted to clarify that so this is a new violet that I purchased. I accidentally did lose two of my no ID, my burgundy and white, and my burgundy. Those are Optimara violets, so I can get those. So this is my Texas two. This is an Optimara. And as you can see, everything's kind of just like making a comeback. So you can see all this new growth here. 
This is a newer edition, so it doesn't look sickly. This one's got something weird going on, and it might just be frozen. I do have propagations from this, but we'll see. There's this really weird phenomenon that happens sometimes where plants grow in a line instead of like through a crown. And I'll have to look back in my Reddit post because I posted um, a flower that looked like it was two flower centers and they were like conjoined. It looked really interesting and a biologist like basically described what it is and it's like a word that I can't remember right now. So these are the African violets and I do have them labeled. So this is a no ID, no ID. So this is basically the no ID shelf. And then down here we have them labeled and their na names are on the side. So Ma's Arctic Skies there. This is a very beautiful violet. So I'm kind of sad if I do end up losing it and it's propagation. This is an alocasia scalprum, and I do have some, it's crushed shells and it kills the spider mites gradually because it gets in their exoskeleton and they try to shed it and then they just keep shedding it because this is an irritant. So I have it powdered. This is a new unfurling leaf. So I just kind of sprayed it and I did it with this. I'll have a video on how I deal with spider mites because every time I go on vacation I'll have problems with plants not having enough water, humidity dropping, and then spider mites are really established by the time I get home. I mean they had five weeks to avoid me detecting them. So they uh, created a lot of damage. So this is one of the typical signs. See that it looks like someone took little needles and just poked along the edges because they are sucking the literal life out of your plants. So this is my T-Rex terrarium. It is really overgrown. I kind of like the way it looks. And then here's my string of hearts. I have it in this very cute planter. We have a few blooms here. So that's what the flowers look like. And then I cut some of it and you can see the roots right in there. Here is one of my newer plants. It's like a Saracenia. It does not have a dormancy. It's really cute, very pretty. I paid like less than $50 or around $50. That's my max. That's the most I'll pay for plants. I've never paid other than this Melana Chrysum. I got it for 100 I really don't like paying a lot for plants because when they die, I'm not trying to like cry. So anyways, this is my Darth Vader Arena Green Spot Hybrid and these are two different cuttings. They're doing pretty well. Got a new leaf here so I'm going to try to be careful. So you can see there are roots there and uh, yeah, so these are really pretty. So that is this shelf. He's like, are you going to feed me? I have a Nubius in here and I have just different types. I can't remember their like names. I got them at Petco and they're doing pretty well. I have them attached to things. This one's free floating. I did a water change and it kind of got pushed down and wedged in between this rock and that piece of glass. I like it when it floats and I can just pop it up. And he likes it too because he likes to sleep on it. So he has his own little like hammock. And I do water changes every week. I do like, it's a five gallon and I have a container that's exactly 2.5. So I'll do a half water change every week. Some people say that's excessive, but it just works for me. And all of the dirt and stuff there's a filter in the back and then a lot of it gets caught up in the gravel. This has a tunnel but I have it submerged under the rocks because he would get in there and I was always afraid he was going to get trapped because it's not just a tunnel. He can actually swim all the way to the tip of it. It's entirely hollow which beta fish really need to get to the surface to get water. I've had him for like a year. I don't know how long they live but as you can see he loves to just get on the leaves and just chill. And I do not leave this light on all the time. It's a phoenix. 
It's a really nice light. And to prevent from overfeeding or just forgetting to feed him, I have this and it feeds him every day at the same time. A lot of friends and family will come and visit and they wanna feed him. And I'm just like, don't worry. He's already been fed and this is just kind of like, okay, he was fed today. Don't feed him, you know, type thing. Next we have my vivarium. I have isopods and springtails, which is why I'm calling it a vivarium. I don't have anything else in here other than a ton of plants. So I've got Hoyas at the top. Mr. Spray every six hours. My only complaint with this system is if there is a power outage of like any, I'm not sure what length of time. If there's a power outage and I don't know how long the power has to be out, this entire system is going to reset. So what happened when I was on vacation is we had a huge storm and we had a lot of property damage actually. Everybody in my area did. And we lost power on and off for two days. So this thing reset and what happened was it didn't run for five weeks. I did not lose any plants. However, when I did come home, I used three gallons of water and I just poured it down in here. It has since been absorbed by the soil. I also ran the mister more frequently. And you would think three gallons is a lot to pour in here. I gradually did it over like a period of a week. The soil was completely dry. The soil was literally like a rock. So I had to do something because these are terrarium plants. They've gotten used to 60, 70, 80% humidity. And surprisingly, none of them were suffering. I did come home to Hoya blooms. So I guess the Hoyas liked it. I do have a peduncle on here right here if I can move it without like ruining it. See that peduncle? That's the first Hoya I've ever had bloom since I got back into Hoyas. My first ever Hoya was from a charity event where they were selling plants for a charity and I purchased the Hoya, the Indian rope vine. And it bloomed, it was great. I had it for several years in high school and then a freeze happened and I just forgot to bring it inside and they don't really like to freeze so it didn't quite make it. We've got a lot of different plants in here. So these are two different begonias. This one's Magia. It's light dependent so it can look red if you give it more light and then it can look like this like where it's almost black with like pink dots. This one has a very unique look. This one and another plant that I have have suffered the most. When I first started this, I was putting leaf scraps in here and that included African violet leaves. This, as of now, these two right here, this one and this one, these are my only two micro mini violets that made it. I had someone send me like five different ones in a trade and these are the only two that made it. So I'm going to kind of leave them in here. I thought about trading this one for a different micro mini. I also have miniature orchids. There's one there. So these are my two miniature orchids. Hoyas are at the top to get less water. I have a bromeliad up there. Lots and lots of air plants. I've got some Spanish moss. It bloomed for me. I didn't know that they could bloom. And then I've got these anthuriums here. So this Zara here was a seedling that I purchased and it actually lived here in the very bottom for quite some time. And then this is a silver blush. It has a new leaf. Both of them have new leaves. You can see the one on Zara. You can see that one's in a sheath right now so you really can't see it all that well. And then this is that light that I made and I just kind of point it sometimes I point it at the terrarium my calatheas that are in rehab basically they're normally here on the floor this is another begonia it has its own enclosure and I'm venting it because I use organic fertilizer on all my terrariums so this one included and there was just a little bit too much 
in there. So I'm just venting it to kind of get rid of some of this algae potentially. And this is two plants. I just chopped it up recently to propagate it. You can see it's already creating new plants. One leaf fell and created a whole new plant here. So this one's really easy to propagate. It just needs to be in an enclosure. Next is the Darth Vader Green and Green Spot. So I showed you the propagations and how they're going. When I came back from vacation, this plant literally was like, girl, I did not miss you. It was popping off. It was really large and had started branching out. It has been blooming for four months now. I did attempt to pollinate it and the seeds fell at the very bottom. And then there's a piece of a leaf that fell off. I used Kiki cloning paste when I did the propagation cuttings. I put Kiki cloning paste on the mother plant in all the places that I cut and then I also cut several different nodes. I just really would love to see this branch out more. Here you have one of my larger plants and then this one is my peace lily. These are the plants that people see when they first come in my house. This powder is, like I said, for preventing spider mites. Here are two different little begonias. So you can see the roots. This one's got one tiny little root. The roots are red because I did a photo shoot and the water needed to be colored for me to be able to remove the background in Photoshop. So I just put red food coloring in there. I did a complete water change on all my props. So it looks pink now, but it dyed the roots. This is intentional neglect. I'm trying to grow this out to show you in a future video what a long neck African violet looks like and how to like repot them. A lot of people will go sometimes a year or two without repotting violets. They really need it every six months, at minimum a year. I made this on a table. Here is my chocolate anthurium. This is my oldest terrarium. I built this when we moved here in 21, which is stuff from the yard. And that is The name is a viola sororia. It's, I thought it was a violet, but it's not. It's a viola. These are my baby violets. Some are doing better than others. This is the Burl Marks Calathea, Fishbone Calathea. It's actually Tenanthe. Napoli Knights, Peperomia, Piccolo Peperomia, Bob Serbens, doing really well. Frozen in time is all right. Cecile Sophie is a wonder to behold. This is a begonia. I really, really love cane begonias. And I really love silver plants. So this is two of my favorite things all in one. And as you can see, we have lots of leaves. This is a good example of this plant getting enough light. So sometimes people will have really long canes and they don't have leaves close together. So the leaves being close together means the plant's getting plenty of light. When it's really spread out, that means the plant needs more light. And this literally shimmers like eyeshadow. It's just a really pretty, very beautiful begonia. So here is one of my plant corners. I have two really large plant corners in wintertime, but in the summer I just have the one. This is a cauldron. I found it at Michael's and it looks so cool. I have pruned this plant, propagated it to make it look like it's overflowing. This is a Nepenthes Gaia and it is really happy. Next, we have the Alocasia Dragon's Breath. It's my only Alocasia right now that does not have spider mites. Well, that and the Silver Dragon, it doesn't have spider mites. 
my Calavia orbifolia, my Begonia tomentosa, and it is honestly kind of, I chopped it up a lot and I use Kiki cloning paste and this one has been the quickest to respond to that. All these places with new growth, that's where I put the paste. I also put it on the Splendid. And all that white stuff is that powder, the crushed shells. This one was so pretty. This was literally a node the size of my pinky and it had no leaves and no roots. And look at it now, it's crazy. This is my Philodendron Mykins. Another Philodendron. One of my oldest plants in the collection. And then here's a Zansoma Lindini. Very beautiful. Nice new leaf coming out. So, that's that corner. These two pieces of wood are going to be fused. I haven't figured out how I'm going to do that. I might drill them together. I want to put orchids on them. This is where the majority of my orchids are right now. I do have some outside that are on a piece of driftwood. Here, I have these two tubs to kind of differentiate watering needs. These need more water than these. These are cattleyas. I have three different ones. And then my experiment Nepenthes, I have three different ones. I'm gonna use bugs, fertilizer pellets, and have one as a control and see which ones grow the fastest. They're identical in size. This is one of my anthuriums I grew from seed. I had four anthurium vitrifoliums, and this is, they're all the same age, but this one literally took off. And it is literally busting out, okay? Whoops, look at that. It is busting out. I'm just gonna wait a little bit longer. And then I've got it in a candle and I have a wick to water it. I purchased this one my 1L year. And then I purchased another Miltoniopsis. I used a grower that I haven't purchased from before. The blooms never opened. The plant had something wrong with it. And I unfortunately didn't reach out to them in time to have them refund me or send a new one so I just I just ate that and then two all year I purchased this one to celebrate the end this is Multoniopsis Sun Glow Amazing and since I went on vacation I waited till after I got back from vacation to purchase these this one's in spike now this one is a large seedling and it's kind of uncommon it's the Miltoniopsis Lillian Nakamoto Tanto, and it kind of has like a black center. And these are beautiful, lovely pansy blooms. They are in moss. They like to be moist. I have a hard time doing that, so what I do is I miss them pretty, pretty consistently. And their roots are really small, see? And they kind of grow everywhere. There's one that's just kind of like growing from the center. This is my Nepenthes that are like being rehabilitated. I got Bill Bailey here and then my Alada. Next we have my Anthurium seedlings and two different begonias. Here is Brevermosa. Here is the another Tomentosa propagation. And then we've got Vitrifolium. This is another from that same batch and as you can see it's got some pretty nice variegation starting. I did sell one for like 30 or 40 bucks and the lady just sent me pictures and it is like it's got some it's got the best variegation out of the whole batch. So you might want to keep them for a little bit longer to see what they're going to look like because these first two leaves on any anthurium that I've grown from seed, you have no idea. You have no idea what it's going to be like. That third leaf, this one right here that's forming.
this third leaf here that's fixing to come out, it'll look more like the mature version. This is the same. And these two are Forgetii dark form crossed with a silver. This one is honestly kind of a disappointment. Um, it is the mother, I think, is Magnificum with Forgetii. And that's what it was as a whole. And then crossed with Besei. And this seed is disappointing because these, these three are the same age. So these two and this one, I got them at the same time. And as you can see, it's a rooted seed, but it's just not putting out leaves. And maybe y'all can help me out with that. I moved them in here. And I'm having a lot more growth with the with this one being the slowest. You can see a little leaf forming. It's very small. It's in the very center. It's just a discoloration. It's like more pink than green. And you can see this one. This one's much further along. These three are the same age and this one still hasn't put out a leaf. I'm kind of like on the verge of giving up on it. I'm still going to leave it in this system, but I, I'm not going to be disappointed if it doesn't make it. This is a Silver Queen. And like I said, see those first two leaves? They all look the same, just about. And that third leaf, that's the one that's going to give you an idea of what it'll look like. So these lights are on from, they're on for like 12 to 14 hours and this is all on the same circuit. So the water's running and the lights are on and then for like 12 hours at night or however long I leave them on. I can't remember if it's on 12 or 14 but at the night time all this stops. So I have this aerator in the bottom and a pump like fill in the water and these are literally just in moss I do have some nutrition in here I'm not really great at hydroponics but I'm learning through trial and error that's why I don't have a ton of plants in here and these are kind of just like you know they really seem to like it they grow crazy roots okay like this one is growing some crazy roots. Let's see. I think this one's got some nice roots on it too. You can't really see them. Yeah, they just need a little bit more time, but they'll grow roots like this Viterfolium here. Here is my really sad Euphorbia obesa. It got sunburnt. I gradually put it in the sun, but that apparently wasn't gradual enough. And here's my Pied Piper. It didn't get watered for five weeks, so it died down big time. But as you can see, this is still firm. So if all the leaves die back and the middle part of the plant's still firm, you still have a chance. So don't give up. I mixed some Super Thrive in there when I went to water it for the first time after it being so dry. And it just popped right back up. But you don't have to use Super Thrive. That's just what I do. So yeah. I cannot wait to see this one bloom. And then this new one. That's cool. That's going to be real cool. So. Outside. I have a ton of plants. These are outside of my porch. So they get full sun. All day. And these are my cacti. If you want to see a video specifically on them, I'll link it in the description. And then I have a newly purchased Desert Rose called Black Widow. I also have two other Desert Roses. And one of them is blooming right now. It is a grafted hybrid, I believe. And it is very beautiful. It has burgundy and cream blooms. I don't know what its name is. It didn't actually have a formal name. It was like... A series of letters and numbers as the name tag and I've since lost that so I have no idea here is my rose bush that I got for Valentine's Day and then underneath the tree right here this is like the death corner if I have a really bad spider in my infestation that's where I put stuff also the rabbit foot fern is huge so I put it in its own little ball 
because I saw one at a conservatory and I was like, I'm going to try to do that. So that's what's going on. And then I've got some orchids mounted on a piece of wood and I've got a war queen them in that basket. Now we're outside. These are where I put the dead leaves. This is a really pretty ficus I've had also since 2018 like the other plant. This is my Raven ZZ. So cool how it starts green and turns black. Another beautiful silver begonia. This one's got some pink in it. It is called Begonia Maurice Amy. And it's, it's a really nice begonia. I got it out of swap torch begonia these are significantly cheaper if you want a dark begonia and you don't want to pay the Darth Vaderina or Darth Vaderina hybrid price you might want to look into one of these here is the dragon wing it's a pink one by proven winners next we have a Hoya Carnosa and it is so beautiful look at that it has a lot of white and for some reason these leaves don't brown as easily as some of the others I watered it and accidentally pinched it in between the pots this is my problem pot this is where I have a ficus it fell over while I was gone and they couldn't prop it up so I ended up just chopping it because it started growing sideways it was like completely vertical no, it was completely horizontal and it had all these vertical shoots coming up and I was just like there's no way I can fix this at the greenhouse it wasn't getting enough light so the plants diameter was really small so when I moved it and got it here the top leaves were so heavy it was bending anyway so I already had it staked but the stake was not enough when we had that big storm come through here are some of my epiphytic cacti plus my corpse plant. They're doing really well. I'm gonna have to pot those individually once winter comes and bring them inside. And my corpse plant actually has the beginning of a bloom. So I'm excited for that because it bloomed right before I went on vacation but I didn't get to see it open. Here are all my Hoyas in one pot with the exception of this one. Here is Macrophylla. These were all cuttings. So they have all grown at different rates this one has taken off significantly since I moved it outside I think this is Callistophylla this is the one I always forget yeah. Callistophylla Wayetii variegated Hoya carii this was a single heart leaf and I purchased it because I did notice that it had some sprouts coming up so it did have a node and it did grow and become a little bit of a plant here is, this is like the first Hoya I ever had when I was in high school, and it's the variegated form. So this is Indian rope vine, and it is variegated. We have Australis Lisa, I believe, and that's everybody. That's in that pot. I don't know what this one's called, but it's really pretty, and it blooms. Let's see, yeah, it's always got some blooms tucked away. Here's the Monstera Adonzi Broadleaf. This is the first time I've ever actually been happy with it. I have been staking this like crazy to try to get it to look right. This is one of my stakes and I normally put a PVC pipe in the middle for stability and to use less moss. I just skipped that step on this one and that's why it's like leaning. <laughs> but it's looking pretty good too. It's the narrow form. Here's another plant named after Burl Marks. This is the Burl Marks philodendron. When the Anthurium vichii was super popular, I purchased this because the King Anthuriums, yeah, they were just so expensive. Like, I wanted one, so I got that and just pretended it was that Anthurium. These are two different begonias in this pot. We're just gonna step back to show you how large that is. This was a cutting from a swap. And look at it now. The canes are crazy. Look at them. They're huge. 
pretty large. This is looking glass, and here we have begonia maculata. Here is my large tree philodendron, also called the, or more recently called the thematophyllum. It is outside and is loving life. I did split it up. Here is a cutting from that super large one that I have. But yeah, I had that one cutting in 2018 and now I have two pretty large plants. These two plants I might be parting with. And this is where all the infected plants are for treatment. So Stella and White Fusion both have mites. Stella seemed to do better, even though they both had an equal amount of mites. And then we have my Flame Star Calathea. It was incredibly underwatered and all my plants were to some extent and that's why some of them got spider mites more easily than others. Here's Jacqueline. This one is really hard to get spider mites off because of the textured trichomes. So let's see. Maybe you can see them. But yeah, it's an interesting surface. And I've had this one for a year. I had it as a corm about the size of my thumbnail. Probably going to disassemble this. Here's a Darth Vaderina hybrid. It's not the green spot. I don't know what it was crossed with. I can't remember. It is a cool to have springtails because they would just eat holes and stuff. See that? They just eat. So there's no mold. There's another Magia in there. This was my pink terrarium. I got dahlias. I cut them and put them outside because they had thrips, but I still wanted to enjoy them. This is a nice philodendron. It's the heart leaf. It's a really nice plant and it's really happy up there. Got the pothos. This is five years old. This is my hot pink Christmas cactus. I think I've had it for two years now. I got it on clearance. The flowers fell off and nobody wanted it. Two piece lilies propagated from that big one. Here's a Dicombachia. And I honestly got this one because I really love the look of the large leaves on the Bird of Paradise, but I don't have Bird of Paradise room, so I just like purchased this to pretend it was a Bird of Paradise. Yeah, so that's a lot of my plants. And then of course there's one, one last one up here. This is the philodendron brandy. Thank you so much for watching my video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll be seeing you next time. Goodbye.